Well, as I mentioned, my special guest today is Fernando Angelucci and Fernando is the senior managing partner of the Titan Wealth Group. As of today, he's less than 30 years old, which makes me want to throw up in a good way. Fernando is based out of Chicago, Illinois. And listen to this folks, when Fernando was only 16 years old, that's when he read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the book that I know you've heard of. And then right after that, when he was 19 years old, he started his first business while he was attending the University of Illinois. And um, what an amazing story he has. He's, he got his engineering degree. So he's a thinker brain. However, he doesn't talk or act like a thinker brain. He's uh, got his degree in engineering back in 2013. And then he went to work on, uh, went to work with a fortune 50, not fortune 500, but a fortune 50 company and immediately started investing in single family houses. By the time he was 23 years old, he was able to replace his income and he exited the rat race of the nine to five life. And he went on to begin investing in his single family and multifamily properties. He is now an expert and brilliance in investing in self storage all the way across the nation. Uh, he raises funds from other folks to invest with him in his self storage syndications. And with that, Fernando, welcome to the show. Hey, Jay, how are you? <laughs> Fantastic, Fernando. Angelucci. Angelucci, you got to say it with your hands. <laughs> yes, and Angelucci. I mean, I just, I just say your last name, and you know, I, you know, I, it makes me feel like I have a, you know, large grandmother ready to feed me pasta and bread. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so anyway, Fernando, so good to have you back, my friend. We had you here on the show. I don't know. I lose track of time six months or a year ago. And, um, you know, things are different. So before we uh, dive into your expertise of self storage and et cetera, well, it is sort of diving in. What's, um, what's been going on the past year in your self storage business? What's going on? What's different? Yeah. Uh, we're growing extremely fast. Um, have already closed on another $10 million in self storage in the last, uh, probably eight or nine months here. Um, we're creating a self storage income fund for those that, uh, want, you know, passive income that's backed by a hard asset by self storage. Uh, we're also doing some ground up developments as well. And then sourcing, properties for, for other investors. Uh, I've been getting a lot of calls as well to start some type of coaching or education program. So that might be coming here pretty soon. Well, I know you would be a fantastic coach and mentor for those that would uh, like to learn about that space. Well, Fernando, um, I want us to dive in here in just a moment. Uh, and I want you to talk about what you're doing different, what you and your team are doing different today in the midst of COVID-19 coronavirus uh, versus four weeks ago as to what you were doing. But before we talk about that, let's give the audience um, an overview of why you have chosen self storage over and beyond say single family houses and et cetera. And by the way, if you're just joining us uh, here on the, if you're joining us on the live stream, you may be on Facebook or YouTube, Go right below the video and type in your name and your city and your state. Type in right now your name and your city and state where you're tuning in from. And uh, we'd love to know where you're from. Now, I want to make sure Fernando feels especially extra welcome. Everybody who's on the live stream right now, everybody right now who's on the live stream, go below the video right now and say, welcome, Fernando. Welcome, <laughs> Fernando. I want everybody right now below the video to type in the words, welcome, Fernando. So we've got Hot Dog Russell back with us from Washington, D.C. Hot Dog, welcome to the show. And we've got Elaine that uh, is also back here with us. Elaine says, hello, I was just at your event a few months ago. I'm investing in both New Haven, Connecticut, starting investments in Memphis, uh, and, um, something about she loves Tennessee style barbecue. So anyway, Fernando, back to my question. Everybody is saying, welcome, Fernando. So you should feel lots of love coming your yeah. way right now. <laughs> so Fernando, 
Why self storage? Yeah. So to kind of step back a little bit, as I was going throughout my investing careers, going from single family to multifamily, I thought that's the way that you're supposed to go to get to passive income, get to a bigger size property. There's going to be less headache. Uh, unfortunately, that's not what I experienced. And what when I talk to a lot of investors, uh, these quote unquote passive investments aren't very passive at all. Um, we owned a couple apartment buildings in the Chicagoland area and we were having, I mean, I was working on these properties every day. I had a third party manager and it was still, you know, taking up a lot of my time. Um, one of the big issues that we had was the eviction laws are so strong in Illinois and in Chicago specifically that it almost feels like I'm being penalized just for being a landlord. Uh, these tenants could stay in your units, not pay for six, eight months, try to go through the entire eviction process. And, you know, you can lose almost an entire year of income, which, you know, that could be three or four or five years of profitability right there uh, just from one or two bad tenants. So I was looking for something that number one was truly a little bit more passive, still had, you know, pretty good returns and specifically something that was recession resilient or counter cyclical. And as I was looking through the different options I had, when I fell on self storage, I, I really did fall in love. Um, it has some of the highest returns uh, historically per real estate asset class. Um, it does really well in recessions and I can go through kind of how it per performed between 07 and 09. It's a lot easier to manage. You can have one manager cover a lot more units, a lot more income than you can with say a multifamily or a bunch of single family homes. Uh, has very low break even percentages, wonderful leverage that's offered to us by the banks, which I can touch on here in a little bit. And then it has a really high sticky factor. And by sticky factor, what I mean is, you know, if I were to raise the rent on a $1,500 per unit, you know, apartment building by 13%, let's say, or 195 bucks, most likely your, your tenants are going to move out and go somewhere else. Uh, but with storage, because we're dealing with much smaller dollar figures per unit, um, I can increase the rent on a unit 13%. You know, say they're paying 150 bucks and I increase the rent by 20 bucks a month. They're not going to, you know, take the headache of renting a $400, you know, moving truck, spending a day and a half moving all their stuff to go to another facility where they can save an extra five bucks. Um, and then the last thing is, like I said, uh, you know, we don't operate in the world of evictions because we are guided by lien law. Uh, we have the auction process or the lien process, which uh, is extremely favorable to the owner, to the to the investor and allows us to rotate non paying customers out of units within 30 to 45 days and get a new tenant in that unit the same day that it's cleaned out, which is a lot faster of a timeline than you have with say multifamily or single family properties. If you're just joining me here on the show, my special guest today is Fernando Angelucci and he is a brilliance when it comes to self storage. Um, and so Fernando is covering why self storage, the benefits, et cetera, um, of other assets. So uh, if you're just joining us here on the live stream, be sure and type in your name and your city and state below the video uh, so we can know where you're tuning in from. We just had Ruby join us from South Carolina. Ruby, welcome to the show. Um, Fernando, question. Um, in single family houses, we got three kinds of cash. We got cash now, we got cash flow, and we got cash later. We got cash now that could be wholesaling, that could be rehabbing and flipping. We got cash flow that could be landlording, positive cash flow on properties. You got cash later, that's building wealth. You can build wealth through uh, single family houses. So that's cash now, cash flow, cash later in the world of single family houses. Yeah. Compare and contrast single family houses to self storage on those three uh, points of cash now, cash flow, cash later. Absolutely. So 
Uh, let's talk about the cash now because I actually just closed the transaction last week. Uh, we wholesaled a self storage facility in Hiawatha, Iowa. Uh, it took us about 30 days to do the underwriting completely uh, to get all of our documents. We found a buyer that was a 1031 buyer. He had to um, he had to deploy about a little over a million bucks or else he's going to be hit with a three hundred thousand dollar tax bill. Mm. Um, so we locked up Hiawatha, uh, the self-storage facility for 800000 We turned around and within 15 days, we resold it to the 1031 investor for a million thirty-two, And we walked away with a $232,000 check as an assignment fee. So that's your question. Shut the front door, man. A two hundred. That's like, you. I'd never heard of that big of a wholesale deal on a single family house. Right. So, and it took just about the same amount of time to wholesale that self storage facility as it does to wholesale a single family home um, with not much more due diligence, really maybe 20% more time spent on the due diligence of that property. All right. So let's have a little case study here on that deal since you've got me all excited now. Sure. So how did you find the deal? Yep. Found it from just calling brokers. Uh, we, engaged a, a commercial broker out in Iowa. Uh, he said he had this property with an owner that was looking to retire. And uh, we said, you know, how, how soon do you need to close? And he said, the sooner the better. I said, okay, that's exactly how we operate here. If you can give us 60 days for closing, uh, we can get that done for you um, without having to put any contingencies for a loan. Uh, and he was, he was ecstatic about that, brought it to his owner. Uh, we got the price down to 800,000. And then um, after we took some photos and ran through all the financials of the facility, we realized that we had a pretty good property on our hand, uh, well below market value. And then so when we found our 1031 investor, they were looking for stable income that they didn't have to do a lot of work on, but they didn't want any partners. Uh, so this was a, almost like a match made in heaven there. And so we, we wholesaled the deal for him. We closed uh, last Friday. Um, and enjoying the $232,000. <laughs> so did you have the buyer lined up or on your list before you put the property under contract? Yep. So the buyer was, uh, the buyer was on our list from uh, previous communications and they just happened to just the perfect timing. They needed to, they already sold their, their subject property. And I think they only had about, about 60 days left to close on a, on a, a, a new property to be compliant with the 1031 laws. So we got there just in time with about 15 days to spare. So in my world, I, on average, my acquisitionist and myself, we have to review 15 completed property lead sheets from sellers mm -hmm. to buy one deal. That's on average. Mm -hmm. All right. How many deals do you and your team need to analyze to put a deal or a self storage under contract? Yeah, we're around the same range, maybe a little bit higher. So 15 to 20 deals that come across our desk. Um, you know, our, our models, we send out an offer to everybody, even if they tell us they don't want one. Uh, and we usually will get anywhere between one to three under contract. And then throughout the due diligence process, one to two of those will drop off and we'll close on one for every 15 to 20 deals that come in. That's an interesting strategy, sending a offer out to everybody, whether they, you can't come to terms over the phone or they say they don't want an offer. Uh, what's your best guess as to what percentage of your offers are you actually able to negotiate a deal that you sent the offer after they told you don't send me an offer or there was, it didn't even look like there was a possibility yeah. Um, of doing business over the phone prior to you sending the offer. What we found is the majority of the deals that we take down, it, they don't sign a contract with us as soon as they meet us. It usually takes about 60 to 90 days to build the rapport to really get, you know, to where we need to be on price and on terms. And what we found is the reason we do, we send everybody offers a written offer is because you know, something can change in six months. You know, they could have some type of 
life event that's going to require them to liquidate or all of a sudden a pandemic hits the entire world and they don't feel comfortable with the amount of cash they have currently and they want to lick, you know, they want to increase that cash stockpile. And the very first pe people they're going to call are the ones that they've already talked to and that already have some type of material in front of them. Sure, they could have gotten a bunch of verbal offers on the phone and it didn't work out, but when they have a physical piece of paper, a contract that was sitting on their desk or in a folder that they filed away with our contact information on it, we're usually one of the very first people that get a call back when someone's situation changes. And now that offer that they thought was too low before, uh, they'll more than gladly take it knowing that we can close cash and without any contingencies. So when you send a written offer to everybody, um, is there a deadline on that offer or is it open-ended or what kind of uh, time frame do you put on that offer? Yep. So there's usually uh, anywhere between three to five days for them to accept the offer. And then there's another three to five days for their attorney to review the offer, to make any changes they want to the terms that are not associated with the purchase price. But that being said, it's always good for them to have it because they can call back and say, we're in a market that's better that, than it was when we initially made the offer, then we can honor that offer. Uh, or if the market has slid a little bit like it has now, um, we can also say, hey, that offer, like you see on the bottom of the, you know, the third page there, um, it was only good for that three day period, but I'm glad you called me. Let's, let's try to rehash this out now with today's current economic situation in the market and, and come to a deal that makes sense. That's a win-win for both of us. My special guest today is Fernando Angelucci, um, brilliant marketer and self storage entrepreneur. Before we close out the show, um, Fernando, you also have a syndication where people might be interested in being involved in the self storage business, but doesn't want to go through the hassle of finding deals, negotiating deals and finding buyers. How can people become involved with you um, on, uh, on that, uh, in that way uh, through your syndication? Yeah. So everything's always uh, a relationship, right? So we'd love to get to know uh, who you are and what your goals are for not only your investments, but, you know, just for your life in general. And then we can match you up with deals in our pipeline that would make sense. Some people, they need cash today. So they, for them, it would be better to come into an income producing property or maybe even a fund of income producing properties that can spread their risk across multiple properties, multiple geographies. Some other people that don't need necessarily any cash today, or maybe they have too much cash today um, and they actually need to, you know, drop their taxable situation or are just looking to grow uh, their nest egg. Um, then maybe a development style deal will be right for them. One where we're going and we're finding a market that has not been completely penetrated yet. We're building class A REIT grade, you know, facilities that are a hundred thousand plus square feet, um, stabilizing it over a period of three to five years and then selling it to a REIT or a publicly traded company at, uh, you know, usually anywhere between, one and a half to two times our initial investment in the deal. Wonderful. Wonderful. Well, Fernando, thank you so much for joining me uh, here on the show. And again, folks, the way for you to reach Fernando and connect with him. Well, let's just tell everybody Fernando, because we got a number of people listening on the podcast. How can they connect with you? Sure. So on all social media, uh, I have a new uh, social media handle. Uh, it's the storage stud. So the storage stud, you can also find me at the, <laughs> you like that Jay? <laughs> I like that. I mean, I, I, you know, someone, uh, you need to have a special session to help someone to get someone to help you with your self image. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you can, you can find me anywhere on, you know, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at the storage stud. You can go to our website, thestoragestud.com, or uh, if you'd like to, you know, communicate with us from the investment company, you can go to titanwealthgroup.com. That's wonderful. Well, Fernando, thank you so much for uh, being with us here on the show, man. I appreciate you, brother. I love your heart. Yeah, I appreciate you. Thanks so much, Jay. All right. God bless. All right, folks, there you have it. Thank you for joining us here on another show. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. Wishing you all the best and here's to taking your real estate investing business to the next level.
We'll see you, see you on the next show. Bye for now.